We've got crazy inflation this country has not seen in decades. We have no baby formula in sight. We've got millions of problems, but we got Joe Biden and he made a, well, he mumbled some things today. It was his great big anti-inflation initiative, but boy, oh boy, I knew he had a problem when he walked in the room, actually. I mean, talk about a lack of leadership. Now, actually, some were encouraged. You know why? Especially on the left, they love the posters. Yeah, ever notice this when they try to make the speech a campaign? What do we have here? Tackling inflation, lowering costs. Yeah, uh, Democrats love to make it a theme and put it in poster form. I can't stand it when they do this. Uh, 200 million uh, COVID shots, they put that in a poster, right? It goes on their signage, they call it. How about awkward phrases like this? Lowering costs for American families. Can you see that back there? Uh, that doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. This is a little bit punchier. We can do this. Anyway, it's all propaganda. It's not substance. I mean, I don't know. Do you call this substance? I see, uh, and as I see it, everything, everything uh, across the country is, as I go across the country, our economy has gone from being on the mend to on the move. Yeah, uh, uh, no, it's gibberish. And he said things that were flat out wrong. I don't know if he thinks we have no other access to information. There is the internet. We know stuff. Joe, we're not reliant on Walter Cronkite to give us skewed news anymore. When he tried this, well, we fact check him immediately. Take a look. The fact is the average cost of a barrel of oil has been steady for weeks. So, uh, so why do gas prices keep going up so high? Republicans would offer plenty of blame, but not a single solution to actually bring down the energy prices. You know, we have no plan. They have no plan to bring down energy prices today. You can get away with this stuff maybe in 1896, but it's 2022. May I present to you Lauren Boebert back in March. We should restart construction of the Keystone XL pipeline, overturn Biden's energy leasing moratorium, and expedite permits for pipelines and natural gas exports. We need the American Energy Independence from Russia Act and stop playing Biden's energy from anywhere from America game. Very specific, very practical, very doable. He lives in a dream world, a dream, or maybe it's just deception. Maybe it's flat out deception from Joe Biden. Uh, he's not getting things done. How many times have we heard that he's been fixing or working on or thinking about the chain, uh, the distribution chain uh, situation? Another reason why prices are up for products people need relates to whether or not the manufacturer has access to all the materials they need to build a product. Think of the materials you need to build a house. If you can't get the materials from the ship to shore, from the, sh from the, uh, from the shore to the home, the prices are gonna go up. Uh, you think? Look, you've been jerking us around on this for too long. Everyone knows you're not picking up the phone and making things happen. Neither is your Secretary of Transportation. By the way, it was the uh, supply chain issue. I had a Joe Biden moment myself, but not like this. He doesn't know where senators are from. Rick Scott, Republican of Florida. He has some words for him today, but he doesn't know where he lives. Their plan has actually made working families, it's going to make working families poor. You don't have to take my word for it. It's in writing. They've made their intentions perfectly clear. Senator Rick Scott, Wisconsin, a member of the Senate Republican leadership, laid it all out in a plan. It's the ultra MAGA agenda. <laughs> and may I present to you Senator Rick Scott, Republican of Florida. And uh, you want to call it ultra MAGA? Great. We like it. America first. Common sense. Yeah, it works for us. Joe, <laughs> MAGA is not a bad word, even though you want to pretend it is. Um, and then we get back to the gibberish part. I agree with what Chairman Powell said last week, that the number one threat is the strength, and that strength that we build is inflation. All right. Uh, Chairman Powell did not say any of that stuff. I like what you just said, though. You built inflation because that's a Freudian slip. 
You did, Joe. You did build this. But now he gets real because remember, it's Lunch Pail Joe. He understands us, right? Look, I know you got to be frustrated. I know. I can taste it. I don't know. I, I just don't, don't say that kind of stuff. Look, the inflation is getting worse, and it's no longer, what do they say, transitory. It seems here to stay because of all the ridiculous amounts of money they're throwing at social programs. As recently as yesterday, uh, $65 billion so people can watch Netflix for free. If your household income is twice the federal poverty level or less, that's about $55,000 per year for a family of four or $27,000 for an individual, or a member of your household is on Medicaid or supplemental security income, or a number of other programs, you're eligible to for affordably connect the affordable connectivity program. Nearly 40% of the households in America qualify. Yeah, qualify. 40% of the American households. People can get the high-speed internet. They can, they can figure it out, they have access to it. If you, if you can figure out how to apply for it, you can, you'll already have it. You ever try to apply for one of these things? A lot of people did, the PPP, PPE stuff. It's hard, it's complicated, and this will be too. Take a look finally on Joe. I know the families all across America are hurting because of inflation. I understand what it feels like. I come from a family where when the, when the price of gas or food went up, we felt it. It was a discussion at the kitchen table. Uh, he just get, he falls in love. He, maybe he starts believing his own lies. This is not true about gas prices when he was going up, growing up. They were the same. They held steady. We looked it up. Uh, <laughs> Joe was not talking about this stuff when pops at the dinner table, okay? But, but, he has fooled the fake news, none other than John King. This guy's supposed to know better. He's like the director of politics at CNN. He falls for it every time. He said he grew up in a family, where, you know, and he's right, he grew up in a blue collar family where you feel it around the table, but the question is, can he convince the American people that empathy should matter when they vote? Yeah, he's buying it, he's buying it all. Oh, one other thing, Joe Biden pretends that he understands business, that he understands the private sector. Just ask him. Look, you've heard me say it before, I'm a capitalist. I'm not out to punish anybody. A capitalist, you say, Joe. A capitalist. A lot of private sector experience. Let's take a look. A brief look at a portion of Joe's resume. He was not in school and not in politics for two years of his adult life. Two years. That's it. But man, he loves to say that he somehow is a great businessman and he understands it all. You've heard me say it before, I'm a capitalist. I believe you should be able to make as much money as you legally can. By the way, I'm a capitalist. I've said it before and I say it again. I'm a capitalist. Look, I'm a capitalist. If you can go out and make a million or a billion dollars, go at it. I don't want to punish anyone's success. I'm a capitalist. And by the way, I, 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 I'm a capitalist. <laughs> what does that mean? How is it helping us? It's just something he likes to say. It means nothing because right now, no kidding, there is a baby formula shortage. You know, it's one thing if you can't get a luxury watch, okay, but baby formula in America and take a look at these numbers. It's a serious thing. 40% of brands out of stock, stores limiting amount customers can purchase. This is an emergency. It would be great to have a capitalist as president comfortable in the business world with true expertise. Sound like anybody we know? They owed $7 million to Grucci and they uh, were all set to do it and then they decided to cancel. So I then called up Grucci. I said, listen, it's way far away from my location, but I'll give you a million dollars. I called up the commissioner, a very good guy. And I said, commissioner, uh, what can we do to get Big Ten football back? Well, I don't know. So we started and we started a little thing, the commissioner, myself. When I saved the energy business. I got Russia and I got Saudi Arabia on the phone and they cut way back. And we're now at forty dollars and plus a barrel. And we're saving tens of millions of jobs in energy. We're the number one in energy in the world. 
That's what we like. A wheeler and a dealer who can make things happen. This is not, this is not make-believe. This is real expertise. This is somebody outside the swamp who can do it himself. We like this and it has worked for us. Here, oh, how about creating the vaccine? This is real stuff. He never gets credit, but he did it. And picking up that phone and smacking people around, it works. I spoke to the head of Pfizer. I spoke to the head of Johnson & Johnson. I spoke to the head of the greatest medical companies in the world. We're doing great. We're going to have it soon. Yeah, doing it. A leader, a president with expertise and knowledge of the private sector. That's valuable. What do we have now? We have Joe walking in with his briefing book and his signs. What do you prefer? What do we prefer? It's obvious.